Hi everyone, in this video I'll read you an article you see published in Brooklyn, New York, September the 8th, 1957. Alright, and now it is time to awake. A verse from the Bible, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Let's get started. Recently, a young man purchased a King James Version Bible thinking it was without error. One day, when glancing through a back issue of Luke magazine, he came across an article entitled The Truth About the Bible, which said that as early as 1720, an English authority estimated that there were at least 20,000 errors in the edition in the two editions of the New Testament commonly read by Protestants and Catholics. Modern students say there are probably 50,000 errors. The young man was shocked. His faith in the Bible's authenticity was shaken. How can the Bible be reliable when it contains thousands of serious discrepancies and inaccuracies? He asks. Bear in mind that the authority author's purpose, sorry, the author's purpose in presenting the material that appeared in Luke, February 26th, 1952, was to show why an intensive study of ancient manuscripts has been undertaken by scholars. Hence, his article deals with the, with the errors that have crept into the Bible text, rather than the general reliability of the text. He cites the most outstanding errors and by stating that some students claim the King James Version has 50,000 errors, he leaves the impression that 50,000 such serious errors occur in the Bible, which, of course, is not true. Most of these so-called errors have been corrected by modern translators. The remaining discrepancies are of an extremely minor nature, which do not appreciably affect the authenticity of the Bible text. The article begins with a question. How accurate is the Holy Bible that we read today? But throughout his entire article, the author never answers that question. If he, he had, but if he, he, if he had, he would have had to answer that as a whole, the Bible is accurate, true, or authentic. But what about the other points the article raises, such as, was there really in Jesus' time an, ad ad an adulteress? whose accusers were sternly told, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Did, did Jesus really say, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel? Or, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved? Did Saint John himself write the reference to the Holy Trinity attributed to him? From information modern scholars have developed, the answer to each question is probably no. Here again, the author of the article, Hartzell Spence, is only partly correct. The passage, the passage, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her, is not found. In several of the older manuscripts of the Bible, the New World Translation of the Bible sets aside the first 11 verses from the rest of the text of John chapter 8. It is given as a footnote which shows that the Sinaitic manuscript, the Vatican number 1209 and the Sinaitic Syriac Codex do not contain these words. Keep in mind that the Sinaitic and the Vatican number 1209 manuscripts are two of the oldest in existence, dating from the 4th century. These verses are found in the Codex Bese of the 6th century, the Latin Vulgate of the 4th and 5th centuries, and the Jerusalem Syriac version of the 6th century. But since the oldest Greek manuscripts do not contain these verses, their origin is doubtful. John chapter 8 verse 7. What about the next point? Did Jesus really say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel? The author quotes from the last 12 verses 
of Mark chapter 16, which have long been challenged. The New World Te Translation sets apart those last verses from the general text. It shows that certain ancient manuscripts and versions of the scriptures add a long conclusion, but that the Sinaitic the Vatican number 1209, the Sinaitic Syriac Codex and the Armenian version of the 4th and 5th centuries do not contain this passage and hence it is doubtful authenticity. It is of doubtful authenticity. The author leaves the impression that the good news or gospel is not to be preached because this text containing such admonition is not authentic. However, in several other places in God's word, the same, this same admonition is given, which passages are reliable. For instance, Matthew chapter 24 verse number 14. And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for the purpose of a witness to all the nations, and the accomplished end will come. Also at Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, Jesus commands, Go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them. So other scriptures besides this questionable one in Mark prove that Christ's followers are to preach and baptize. What about this point? Did Saint John himself write the reference to the Holy Trinity attributed to him? The scripture referred to is John chapter 5 verse 7 and 8. In commenting on this text, a Greek scripture translator Benjamin Wilson writes in his the empathic diaglot, this text concerning the heavenly witness is not contained in any Greek manuscript which was written earlier than the 15th century. It is not cited by any of the Greek ecclesiastical writers, nor by any of the early Latin fathers, even when the subjects upon which they treated would naturally have led them to appeal to its authority. It is therefore evidently spurious. The truthfulness of this statement is borne out by the fact that the modern translations except Roman Catholic translations from the Latin versions do not include the text. An extremely significant point is that most modern translations have already eliminated the errors to which this writer refers in his article. Notice that the 20 to 50,000 errors are accredited to the two editions of the New Testament commonly read by Protestants and Catholics. Those would be the King James Version and the Catholic Douai Version, which were produced in 1611 and 16th century, respectively. So they were both more than 300 years old. When these translations were made, the Koine, Greek in which the Bible was written, was not so well understood as it is today. So those translators made errors in translation that have been corrected by modern scholars. Archaeologists have also contributed to Bible research by finding many ancient manuscripts of the scriptures. Bible errors have been eliminated to the point where the remaining minor discrepancies are negligible. Sir Frederick G. Kenyon, an outstanding English scholar, in his book The Bible and Archaeology, pages 288 and 89, says, The interval then between the dates of original composition and the earliest extant evidence becomes so small as to be in fact negligible and the last foundation for any doubt that the scriptures have come down to us substantially as they were written has now been removed. The Bible is reliable and beyond all doubt is God's word, it says. Yet, as you have seen, that this article shows a fact then tries to cover it, which is a fact that the Bible 
was actually containing thousands of thousands of errors and then they have somehow been corrected by scholars who are these scholars in real terms so the answer is yours if a god scripture has been containing too many errors the question is has god not sent a new one an ultimate one a last and final testament that is the glorious quran take it into consideration which you can only understand and comprehend and judge fairly if you read the quran itself in a language you understand as your native language read it page by page chapter by chapter once you hold it in your hands and start reading it you won't be able to leave it aside because in Quran the name of Mary passes 32 times while the name of Mary the mother Mary passes only 18 times in the Bible in Quran the name of Mary passes for 32 times almost the twice amount the double number there are many things that you don't know about the Quran which you can overcome only by reading it since the first imperative of Quran the very first word the very first word of the very first verse sent down to the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was read which is an imperative read with the name of your God who has created you from a sticky cell read because your God is generous